Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here this morning with Senator Carla Nelson. She is the Assistant Minority Leader of the Senate, and she is also the lead uh, minority person on the Education Committee. And she's here to give you some of her insights today. Well, I think we'll continue with some of the things that we've started uh, previously. Um, I think we'll continue looking at closing the achievement gap. It's not acceptable uh, that our state has the highest achievement gap in the nation. And now the question is, how do we go about closing that? Uh, particularly in our district, uh, our English language learners are doing better than the rest of the state. Uh, but yet uh, there is a, a significant gap there. It's a growing part of our population. So we need to look at how can we better ensure that these new English language learners are achieving so that they will be ready for college and career as they progress. And um, there's different ways to do that. One thing we did last year that was helpful was the bilingual seals, which is actually honoring and um, understanding the achievement and the value of being bilingual. So we want to build on that. Uh, I'm looking at doing some uh, using modern technologies, innovation, uh, actually expanding on some of the things the Rochester School District is already doing uh, regarding personalized digital learning that can help really close that achievement gap, particularly with our ELL learners. Well, I think the campaigns in general, uh, even statewide, have been pretty silent. Uh, it's certainly not been, uh, we haven't seen that many uh, distinctions uh, regarding education. In fact, it kind of pains me that education hasn't really gotten as much discussion as it needs and as it uh, must have. Uh, but I think you will see a little bit of difference in um, education priorities, whether they are more metro-centered or more outstate. Uh, one of the campaigns is very focused on outstate, one is more focused on the metro area. And Rochester is kind of a unique situation because while we're certainly not metro, uh, our district is much like many of the metro districts. Although, of course, we're very glad we have higher achievement levels. Well, first let me say that it's a long overdue that we renovate our beautiful Cass Gilbert design capital. I was glad to lead that charge and it was very bipartisan and it continues to be so. But in the short term, there are definitely going to be some challenges this legislative session. Um, if you were to come here today, you would see that many of the rooms are closed, the rotunda is closed. Uh, we're not even sure how many committee rooms are going to be open and available once session starts. And so what that means is, um, are we going to have committees back to back? Or are we going to have multiple committees going on at the same time, which means sometimes members are not at one committee because they're at another. It's going to be very difficult to keep up on all of the things that are happening. Uh, and knowing, especially for those who are advocating or watching legislation, they're going to be, have to be extra vigilant this year uh, because of the fact that we don't know where those committee hearings are going to be or when are they going to be. They could be early morning, late at night, could be Saturdays. We're not really sure how the renovations inside the Capitol are going to affect uh, the committee hearing process. But the one thing I will say, we know from experience that our best legislation takes place and happens when we have a robust public input. And we have the advocates, we have the people that have concerns, and we can mold and change legislation to address concerns. It is not helpful when things are either pushed through or shoved through without that very good didactic uh, debate in the public. So it'll be very important that we uh, work to make sure that happens, that we have that adequate debate. I do have several education bills that I'm looking at. I mentioned one uh, using more innovation regarding uh, digital individualized learning, particularly with our ELL students. Uh, maybe starting with some pilot sites. I'm kind of looking at having some state money, uh, some, some money from the districts, but uh, great state matches, uh, maybe multiples in the match. But uh, looking at that, also, you know, we still have this uh, era where we're over-testing our kids. 
And so while we have ACT tests and the tests that go with that, they haven't yet been aligned to our uh, Minnesota comprehensive tests. And so we still have kids getting this dual track of testing. So I'm looking at doing some streamlining there uh, so that we are using one uh, testing measurement in various forms rather than these separate tracks. Well, the question is, uh, divided government does allow for that didactic interplay between ideas. And sometimes, while it's painful to watch, sometimes you end up with better legislation when all ideas and all viewpoints have been brought to the table. Um, but we do, you are correct in that two weeks will make a big difference. Uh, we could have a different governor and we could have different, we will definitely have different seats being held in the Minnesota House of Representatives and different committee chairs. So things will definitely change after the election, I'm just not sure how. Uh, but I will say that um, the, the uh, trajectory of education and its importance should continue in our state. And I'm, I'm hopeful that the public dialogue is there to support that. And so one of the best ways that I can best represent you or any of your representatives, senators can do that is by knowing what it is that is important and prioritizing that and then getting it to us in a timely manner. Because session will start, it starts earlier this year, it's going to start early in January. And because of all of the different uh, menagerations going on with the Capitol uh, and the hearings, hearings might even be shorter. Uh, we just don't know. So it's gonna help if you can be very focused and tell me what are those initiatives that are important to the Rochester School District. And I've already visited with some board members, some of you, uh, our superintendent, uh, some teachers. But I would encourage moms and dads and teachers across the district and business owners, people that are concerned about making sure that we have that high quality education to contact me with your ideas. And quite frankly, the sooner the better. We need to have legislation ready. In fact, I was working on some education uh, legislation drafts this morning even. So it's important that we get that legislation early, not only so we can get the drafts in place, but so that we can pull together those supports that we need, uh, in this case within the Senate, so we can assure passage. Well, uh, an important piece of educational achievement starts before children even get to kindergarten, and that's making sure that all of our kindergartners are ready to learn, and that starts with high quality early childhood. And as you know, the state uh, funded, I was glad to support that, additional funding for high quality early childhood. One of the issues that we need to address, however, is the scholarships for this high quality early childhood. Some of it is actually going to the students, uh, but about over half of them are actually going to the classrooms or the institutions. And the challenge there is that the money is really not following the student. And so if the child's family moves and they want to move to the high quality early learning center uh, near their new home, suddenly that child loses his scholarship. And so I don't think that was the intent of the legislation. The money was there to empower parents, in this case low-income parents, to help them get that high-quality early childhood. And uh, we want to continue that. And so there's some tweaking that needs to be done with the legislation there. Mm -hmm.